From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello and welcome to the 2021 AWS Global Public Sector Partner Awards. I'm your host, Natalie Ehrlich. Today we're going to highlight the most val valuable Amazon Connect deployment. And we are now joined by Steve Careful, Adult Social Care Expert, PA Consulting Group, and Graham Allen, the Director of Adults Health and Care at Hampshire County Council. Welcome gentlemen to today's session. Thank you Thank very you. much Hello. indeed, Natalie. Well, by now we're all really familiar with the call to shelter in place and, and how it especially affected the most vulnerable of people. Give us some experience uh, or some insight on your experience with that, especially in light of some of the technology that was deployed. Let's start with you, Graham. Yeah, thank you. So just by way of context, Hampshire County Council is one of the largest areas of local government in England. So we have a population of 1.4 million people and when uh, lockdown was imposed by the national government in England uh, on the 23rd of March of 2020, shortly thereafter, the evidence in terms of vulnerabilities around COVID-19 strongly identified that people with a range of clinical conditions were most vulnerable and needed to shield uh, and self-isolate. And for the size of our population, we quickly were advised that roughly uh, some 30,000 people in the initial cut because of clinical uh, vulnerabilities needed to shield self and receive a variety of support. Shortly after that, through the summer of 2020, that number increased to some 50,000. And then by January of this year, that number further increased based on the scientific and med medical evidence to 83,000 people uh, in total. So that represented a huge challenge for us in terms of offering support, being able to make sure that not only practical tasks related to obtaining shopping, food, and so on and so forth, but also medications, but also the real risks of self-isolation. Many of the people that we were needing to support weren't hitherto known to us as a social care provider. They were being advised through uh, clinical medical uh, evidence and needs. And many of those people lived alone. So the real risk of, of self-isolation, not seeing uh, anyone potentially for an extended period of time and the risks to their well-being was something very significant to us. So we needed very rapidly to develop a solution in terms of making contact and being able to offer that support. Yeah, and I'd love it now um, to get your take, Steve, on how PA Consulting Group helped deliver on that call and that need. Mm, sure. So we, we have a, a an existing relationship with Graham and, and the council. We've been working together for a number of number of years, delivering care technology solutions to service users around the county. Uh, we were obviously aware there was a major issue as, as COVID and lockdown began. Uh, so we sat down with Graham and his colleagues to ask what we could do to help. Um, we used our relationship with AWS and our knowledge of the Connect platform to suggest a, a mechanism for making outbound calls at, at really at scale. Um, and um, that was the beginning of, uh, of the process. We were very quickly in a position where we were able to actually get that service running live. In fact, we had a, a working prototype within four days and a live service in seven days. And from that point on, um, of those many thousands of people that Graham's alluded to, we were calling up to two and a half thousand a day to ask them, did they need any help? Were they okay? Uh, if they did need help, if they responded yes to those to, to that question, we were then able to put them through to a conventional call handler in a, in a call center where a conversation could take place about what their needs were. And as Graham said, uh, in many cases, that was uh, people who couldn't get out to get food shopping, people who were running short of, of clinical uh, medical um, uh, supplies, uh, people who needed actually some some interesting things. Pet care came up quite often, people who couldn't leave the home and look after their, their dog. Uh, they just needed some help locally, so we had to integrate with local voluntary services to get those those kinds of um, uh, results and support delivered to them uh, across the whole of Hampshire and ultimately um, throughout the whole of the COVID uh, experience, so coming right up until, until March of this year. Right, well, as the uh, COVID pandemic progressed and, uh, you know, evolved in different stages, you know, with variants and, and a variety of different um, issues that, that came up over the last year or so, you know, how did the technology develop? How did the relationship develop? And, uh, you know, tell us about that process that you had with each other. 
So um, uh, the, the, the base service remained very uh, uh, um, consistent. Um, at different points in the year, when there were different uh, issues that maybe needed to be communicated to, uh, to the service users we were calling, we would change and update the script. Um, uh, we would uh, improve the, uh, the logistics of the service, make it simpler for colleagues in the council to get the data into the system to make the calls. Um, and basically, we, we did that through a, a constant series of, of, of meetings, checkpoints, staying in touch, and, and really treating this as a very collaborative exercise. So I think for all of us, uh, COVID was, was a constant stream of surprises. Nobody could really predict what was going to happen in a week or a month. So we just had to all stay on our toes, keep in touch, and, and be flexible. And I think that's where our, our preferred way of working and that of AWS and the Hampshire team we were working with, we really were able to do something that was that was special and, and very fleet of foot and responsive to needs. Right. And I'd also love to get Graham's uh, insight on this as well. What kind of results have you seen? You know, do you have any statistics on the impact that it made on people? Did you receive any qualitative uh, feedback from the people that use the service? Yeah, no, absolutely we did. And one of the things we were very conscious of from day one was, was using a system which may have been unfamiliar to people in the first instance in terms of receiving uh, calls. The fact that we were able to use human voice uh, within the, the call technology, I think really, really assisted. We also did a huge amount of work within uh, Hampshire County Council. Clearly in terms of, of the work we do day in, day out, we're well known to our, our local population. We have a huge range of different responsibilities ranging from maintenance of the roads through to the provision of, of local services like libraries and so on and so forth, and also social care support. So we were able to use all of that to coalesce, as Steve has said, through working very collaboratively together with a, a trusted brand, Hampshire County Council, working with new technology and the feedback that we received was both uh, very much data driven in real time in terms of, of successful calls and also those going through to call handlers and then the outcomes being delivered uh, through those call handlers to uh, live services out and about around the county. But also that qualitative impact that we had. So uh, across Hampshire County Council, we have some 76 elected members Believe me, they were very active. They were very interested in the work that we were doing in supporting our most vulnerable residents. And they were receiving literally dozens of phone calls as a thank you by way of congratulating, but as I say, thanking uh, us and our partners, PA, our district council partners, and also the voluntary community sector in terms of the very real support that was being offered to residents. So we, we, we had a very uh, fully resolved uh, picture of precisely what was happening literally minute by minute on a live dashboard in terms of outgoing calls, calls going through to call handlers, and then sex successful uh, call completion in terms of the outcomes that were being delivered on the ground around the county of Hampshire. So a phenomenally successful approach, well appreciated and well, uh, I think, applauded uh, by all those receiving calls. Terrific insight. Well, Steve, I'd love to hear from you more about the technology and how you put the focus on the patient, on the person, really made it more people focused. And, yeah. you know, obviously that's so critical in such a time of need. Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right, Natalie. We, I think what we were able to do, because I, um, uh, myself and my immediate team have worked with, uh, with Hampshire and other local authorities on the social care side for so long, we, we understood the need to be very person focused. Um, I think sometimes with with technology, uh, it, it comes in with it with a particular uh, way of operating that isn't necessarily sensitive to the to, to the audience. And we knew we had to get this right from day one. So, uh, Graham's already mentioned uh, the, the use of human voice in voicing the the, the bot call. Uh, that was very very important. We we selected a, a voice actress who had a very reassuring, clear tone recognizing that many of the individuals we were calling uh, would have been uh, would have been older people maybe a, perhaps a, a little hard of hearing we needed to have the volume in the call simple things like this were, were very important and one of the one of the debates i remember having very early on was um uh, the, the the choice as to whether the uh, response that somebody would give to the question, do you need this or that, 
could be by pressing a digit on the phone. And we, we understood that, again, because potentially of frailty, maybe a little lack of dexterity among some of the people we'd be calling, that might be a bit awkward for them to take the phone away from their face and find the button and press the button in time. So we pursued the idea of, of um, an oral response. So uh, if you want this, say yes. If you don't want it, say no. And uh, those kinds of small choices around how the technology was deployed, I think, made a really big difference in terms of, of acceptance and adoption and success in the way the service ran. Terrific. Well, Graham, I'd like to shift it to you. Could you give us some insight on the lessons that you learned um, as a result of uh, this pandemic and also uh, trying to move quickly to help people in your community? Yeah, I think I think the lessons and some of the lessons that, that we've, again, learned through our response to the pandemic are lessons that to a degree have traveled with us over a number of years in terms of the way that we've, we've used technology over a period working with PA, which is be outcome focused, uh, it's sometimes very easy to get caught up in a, in a brilliant new piece of technology. But as Steve has just said, if it's not meeting the need, if we're not thinking about that human perspective and thinking about the humanity and the outcomes that we're seeking to deliver, then to some degree it's, it's going to fail. And this most certainly did not fail in any way, shape or form because of the thoughtfulness that was, was brought forward. I think what we learn from it is how we can apply that uh, as we go forward to the kinds of work that we do. So as I've already said, we've got a large population, 1.4 million people. Uh, we uh, are moving from some really quite traditional ways of responding to that population, accelerated through our response to COVID, through using AI uh, technologies, thinking about how we embed that more uh, generally across the broader service offer, not only in terms of supporting people with social care needs, but that interface between ourselves and colleagues within the health sector, the NHS, to make sure that we're uh, thinking about outcomes and becoming much more intuitive in terms of how we can engage with our population. It's also, I think, about thinking across wider sectors uh, in terms of, of meeting people's needs. One of the, I think, probably um, uh, unrealized things pre-COVID was that actually uh, using virtual platforms of various kinds have actually increased engagement with people. Uh, we've always thought in very traditional ways, in order to properly support our population, we must go out and meet them face to face. What COVID has taught us is actually for many people, the virtual world, connecting online, having a variety of different technologies made available to support them in their daily living is something that they've absolutely welcomed and actually feel uh, much uh, safer uh, through being able to do. The access is, is much more instant uh, you're not waiting for somebody to call. You're able to engage with a trusted partner, you know, face to face over a virtual platform and get an answer more or less then and there. So I think there's a whole range of uh, opportunities that we've learned, some of which are already embedding into our usual practice, if I could describe anything over the last 15 months as usual. But we're taking it forward and we hope to expand upon that at scale and at pace. Yeah, that's a really excellent point about the rise of hybrid care, both in the virtual and physical world. What can we expect to see now moving forward? Um, like to shift over uh, to our other guest, um, you know, uh, what, what do you see next for technology as a result of the pandemic? Well, there's, there's certainly been an uptick in, uh, in in the extent to which people are comfortable using these technologies. And um, uh, again, if you think about the kind of target group that that Graham and his colleagues in the social care world are, are dealing with, these are, are, are often older people, people with perhaps mobility issues, people with uh, access issues when it comes to getting into their GP uh, or, or getting into hospital services. Uh, the ability for those services to go out to them and interact with them in a much more immediate way, in a way that isn't as intrusive, it isn't as time consuming, it doesn't involve leaving the house and finding a ways of public on public transport to get to see a person who you're going to see for, for five minutes in a, a, a in, a, in a, a, an unfamiliar building. I think that that um, in a sense COVID has accelerated the um, uh, the acceptance that that's actually pretty good for some people. It won't suit everybody and it doesn't work in every context but I think where it's really worked well and WAX is a great example of that is in, is in triaging and prioritizing. 
Uh, ultimately, the kinds of resources Graham's talked about that people need to access, the GPs and the nurses and the care professionals, are in short supply. Uh, demand will, will, outstrip, uh, will outstrip supply. Uh, therefore, being able to triage and prioritise uh, in that first interaction using a technology uh, route enables you to ensure you're focusing your efforts on those who've got the most urgent or the greatest, the greatest need. Uh, so it's a kind of win all round. Um, I, 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 I think there's definitely been a sea change and it's hard to see, hard to see people going back just as the debate about will everybody eventually go back to offices having spent a year working at home you know i think the answer is invariably going to be you know no some some will but but many won't and and it's the same with technology some will continue to interact through a technology channel uh, they won't go back um, uh, to, to the face-to-face -face option that they had previously terrific well thank you both very much steve careful pa consulting group and graham allen hampshire county council Really appreciate your, your insights on how this important technology helped people who were suffering in the midst of the pandemic. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Well, that's all for this session. Thank you so much for watching.